Hello, I'm in the video for my daddy. What's going on, everybody? So this bright orange light here is a heater. So it's going to be on so I stay warm. So just don't pay attention to it. It's, it's just there for me. Um, but anyway, today we're going to have someone from YouTube that has been just starting YouTube, I think. We're going to find out for sure, but it's just painting it. Um, figure painter, really, really good figure painter, actually. Um, but we're going to learn about some of the techniques and stuff and the products he uses that could be for all types of hobbies. So here's Jerry and we'll get going. What's going on, man? Hey, buddy. How are you? Good, man. I mean, it's, you know, Saturday already had a pretty busy morning. So. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So go ahead and plug your YouTube channel, and then we'll we'll kind of. Well, they uh, YouTube just changed some stuff uh, where I, actually it's easy for you to find people now. So just type in just just paint it, and my name, my channel should just come up, and that's it. You know, I got a I got a bunch of how to videos and some reviews. Also, do I've been doing some giveaways. So if you guys are interested in looking at that, you know, just join and. You know, hit the like button or whatever, and uh, so this way you keep updated with all that stuff. And, and you know, anybody's welcome to participate, even you, Josh. So, you know, so no, anybody's welcome. That that's awesome. I I, I understand that whole process too yeah. with YouTube, right? It's yeah. it's just a it's just a course, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, I've been you know also the whole uh, video thing is all new to me. So you know, I've been trying to. You know, make things better a little, a little as I go a little bit at a time, but it's getting there. I, I think I'm getting the hang of it a little bit more. So uh, the videos are getting better. My videos, my tutorials are really long, guys. I'm going to be totally honest with you, but I, I'm teaching you the whole process from the start to the end. And um, I got the, one of my last tutorials was five episodes in about 14 hours worth of video. Now you can skip through whatever you don't want to watch or whatever you don't want to see or things that you might know already. But it's mostly for like beginners to get their hands wet on how to learn how to paint figures. You know, that's that's why that's what I'm I'm gearing towards, you know, towards those that kind of crowd, that kind of people. And it goes for 3D printed or, you know, model kits or resin casted garage kits. So anything out there, you know. And and I think that's the cool part about your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um that you go through that. I, I, I know I've learned a couple of things just watching. Yeah. You know, and it's, and it's, and I'm hoping that I, you know, I'm reaching out to people that are trying to either learn how to paint or just learn, trying to learn some new techniques and things like that. Because, you know, we do that whole Saturday, you know, uh, group painting that we do with Gilbert, you know, from red dragon model works. And, um, and, you know, I learned stuff from that. You know, I'm still learning. I'm still pretty new as far as painting. I've been doing. I've been painting only for about three three years. You know, you know, started all with before just before COVID. I bought my first 3D printer, and that's when I started painting. You know, so and then people started asking me, "Hey, how do you do this? And how do you do that?" And one guy said, "Hey, if you do a video, okay, wait, 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 back up. So yeah, you've yeah. only been painting figures for two years? For three years, just before COVID, yeah." That's incredible, dude, because yeah. we're going to show some of your work later. Oh, thank that's, you. Yeah. That's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and, it, and, it, and the way that I learn is like watching guys like you guys, like you, uh, Gilbert, you know, a bunch of people out oh, there that yeah, have yeah. YouTube stuff. Oh, I'm not in Gilbert's class. I well, I do okay, but no, 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 oh, no. But you do. I've seen your work and you do pretty good stuff. And, you know, you do a lot of, <laughs> you do a lot of hardware stuff that, you know, that I couldn't possibly do, you know, so. Um, you know, I'm into the figures. That's what I'm into. You know, I do a lot of busts and a lot of, you know, uh, statues and stuff. And, um, like I said, my, when, 
just before COVID, I bought my first 3D printer and I couldn't get it to work. I bought an Elegoo Mars, you know, resin printer. Okay. I couldn't get to print anything. And it sat there in my closet for like about, I don't know, six months. And then one day I said, you know what, let me give it another try. And I started trying. I started getting some prints and stuff. And then and then it took off from there. But then COVID hit. And I start, I wasn't wor- I wasn't working all the time. I was working like two weeks on and two weeks off, right? So I had a lot of time to burn there for like two years we did that. So I start I just started printing and painting and printing and painting and upgrading my printers and now I'm printing all the time. <laughs> Not stop, you know, down the rabbit hole, you know, you start printing stuff all the time and so what was the thing that you learned about what was your biggest problem with the 3D printer? It's uh temperature, nothing below 65 up here in this room. In the wintertime, it gets really cold because the heat doesn't rise up that fast. I'm, I'm like on the fourth level of a split level. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm on a fourth level in the split level. So the heat takes a while to rise, and when it does, it doesn't get all that high real fast. So, But uh, temperature was one of my biggest things during the wintertime. And then the other thing is how you place and the the piece on the build plate so you don't have, you don't have constant, like, uh, fails and stuff like that and that was the learning curve and then you know um uh leveling and you know there was a lot of stuff that you need to know as far as re- i just bought the other day a, a filament printer i set that up in two seconds and i got i got I had stuff printing with no problem it's the resin printing that takes a little bit long if you want to get that crisp beautiful print you're gonna have to take it takes a lot of practice those supports was a big thing you know learning how to support those kits you know stuff like that that was a big big learning curve for me too you know i'm starting to get better but i'm still not there i don't think though so yeah like you get something from mike and it's like you look at the stuff you get off your printer and it's like yeah. how the heck did like, he do that yeah and you saw mike now he learned he he's got a new way of doing his supports where you the supports don't even show on his stuff i mean yeah i i would yeah. love to know that I love to you know, that's his business. I get it. He doesn't want to share secrets, but damn, man, this stuff, that stuff comes out really nice, you know. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, right. Mike Mike's been doing a real good job with his stuff, you know. So, yeah. So, so you, you've been doing figures for about two years. What's the one thing that you 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 started then that you wish you like you do now that you wish you would have learned that back then? Um, I'm going to say uh, layering. Just don't try to paint everything all at one shot. Take your time. Do, do you know, light layers. Even if it doesn't cover it the first time, you know, take your time and do layers, you know, do small layers at a time and things, your results are going to be a lot better that way. And that, 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 I wish I knew that first because you know if you look if you compare some of my old stuff to my new stuff it's like night and day you know so yeah it, and it's crazy how that little topic can apply to like bases oh, figures everything tone. yeah i see i see that you could do that with everything you know and i and i, I was messing around a little bit with uh with uh trying to build a car and stuff and the same thing you know just light layers just take your time doing it it's patience too you know you know you gotta you gotta learn to be patient with the stuff and Things will come out and work out pretty good. You know, once you get the technique down, then everything else just come naturally, you know, so. No, I mean, it's absolutely true. I, 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 once I kind of figured that out and like going through that class with Gil on how to lay the skin tone down. Yeah. That helped me so much. Yeah. He, he, he's very good with oils. You know, I, I'm, I'm impatient with oils to be honest with you because it, <laughs> But the way he does it, though, they, the oils they dry very fast. So see, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't, I never did it that way. So I should give it more of a try, you know. what I'm saying, and not, not shun it so much and so quick, you know, because I got the same set that he has that he uses, and I'm thinking about using it again and using his technique because his technique is very good. Uh, I just do acrylics, and I've been doing that since I started, and I feel comfortable with it, you know. But, you know. It's not that, you know, either one is better than the other. It's just, you know, the technique that you find that makes you feel comfortable doing it is the technique you're going to use, you know. But don't be afraid to try new things, though, at the same time, you know. <laughs> you know? Right. So, yeah, that's the big thing, so. 
so so um basically that's how i found you was way of the dragon right the painting class we've all been doing right or right, you guys right. have been doing i haven't done the last couple but um how did how did you find gil well when i first started painting one of the things that i was doing i was looking for on youtube to how to how to paint figures or how to paint you know whatever and, I, and a lot of them there were like the meanies right the Warhammer and uh, all those guys that were painting minis, and I didn't really want to paint me. I can't see nothing, and it's, I can't. I can't paint a small kit like that small, you know. And I have a hard time painting things that small. So then, you know, I, I just happened to stumble onto his channel when he was doing the interviews. Hmm. And one of the interviews that I found was the one he did with Mike, Hobby Mike from NY Three mm -hmm. D Creations, and he did one with uh, George Stevenson from Black Heart Models. You know, oh, George, yeah. yeah, he does the big kits and stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, this is cool stuff, man. And I was like, I, I didn't know that they made kits like that big and stuff. You know, I was like, holy crap. So that's when I really started getting into it. Once I found him and then I and then he says, oh, join this styring syndicate and Facebook. And that's how I found him. And that's how I joined, you know, and he was that was actually one of the first Facebook groups that I joined uh, for modeling was the styring syndicate. You know, you guys. No, it's awesome. It's a good group in there. So yeah, you know what is it, you got everybody from all different genres. You know, you got car modelers and you know armor guys and bigger guys. You got a big mix of stuff and really cool people, man. That's that's what I really like about it. You know. So so let's let's talk about the three D printing for a second. Okay. How how do you like that process? And is there something – and how, how do you like the quality of figures that are coming off of it compared to, like, other stuff? Um, well, I, I, I got to be totally honest with you. I started off doing 3D, 3D printing, right? And then I jumped into the garage kits, the, the resin cast and stuff. Um, I, I like them both. Uh, do I like one better than the other? I think that, you know, as, as of right now, I like the casting stuff better. And, and it's not for, I think, I find it that it's more, you know, a guy does it by hand and there's value to that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, not say that the guys that are doing digitally are any different. But I think that's a, that's a gift that you can do it by hand with, you know, sculpt something with your hand. It's, it's like a form of art. And like I said, like it's not discrediting the, the guys that do it three, you know, digitally, but it's, it's a little different, but, but you're starting to see like, uh, even the casting is becoming hybrid where they're using 3d printed parts to cast and mix and mosh, you know? So, but as far as the quality and the stuff, it's getting better. It's getting a lot better. You guys start, you know, from where it started back in what, three, four or five years ago, you know, whatever started, you know, these, these resin printed kits to come out, uh, it's, you know, the, the quality of the, the sculptors out there is, is getting a lot better. Uh, one of the, my big, one of the ones that I really like is, um, that Mike got me into was, uh, uh, ritual castings and their stuff is like amazing, you know, but, um, and then you got Kutan and you got a couple other ones, but you gotta watch out though with the 3d print. I don't know if you ever found the same problem is that, you, know, you got these guys that could they'll sculpt the crap out of something, but they can't cut it or, you know, yeah. Prop it. And, and then when you print it, the stuff doesn't fit right or just just looks like crap, you know. And and they don't they don't really cut those pieces right, you know. But I don't know. But or, you know, they, 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 those guys are getting better though. They're starting to learn how to do things the right way, you know, and things like that. You know, I do like the three D printing a lot. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with it. Yeah, you know, I like dynamic poses. You know, and that's something that with the casting you probably can't really do a whole lot. Otherwise, you know, with the dynamic posing and stuff, I, I like I like that kind of stuff. You know, where guys are fighting each other or something like that. You know, I like the, that kind of stuff too. But uh, I don't like the whole too much of the museum poses where just stiff standing. You know, yeah. I I know I I totally get that, yeah. and I. I think for me, it's, it's just, it's crazy where that all has come. I've, yeah. I've done one garage kit and it was super good. Yeah. 
But the three D printing over the last, I'll say even the last year is like night and day different. Yeah. And you know, it, the the bad thing about the three D printing is that you know, as you buy you buy an STL and I buy the same STL and a bunch of other people and and everybody has the same thing, <laughs> right? So everybody's got the same stuff and you know how you paint it. I guess is is going to be the difference, right? Where yeah. a garage kit or or a resin casted kit is only going to be a a certain amount of those kits out in the market and that's it. You know, the, you know so. There's value. There's, I think, there's a little more. Right now, there's a little more value to that than. Well, and 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 that's where the three D printed part of that comes in, right? Yeah. Because now they have a three D print that is reusable, and then once they use it up, they can just print out another one and just use that. That's true. That's true too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know and, that. You know this. You're gonna see. You're gonna see this whole industry change with between now and the couple next couple of years is probably gonna totally change. Uh, where you're not going to see probably so many casting pieces anymore, and you're going to see more just 3D printing. That's it, you know. But um, you know, I don't know. It, it, you know, it's it's. I see a lot of people like really making some really nice things out there, and um, and hopefully the quality comes out of your printer is the quality that you expect it. You know, that's that's my big worry. If you're going to spend money on STL, you want the STL to come in and where you're going to be able to fit the parts and things like that. Where you don't have to battle and fight to try to make those things work for you. That's what where Mike comes in is Mike test prints everything before he sells them out to the market, you know, and uh, and he could change some of those things to make it work. But, you know, for guys like us that don't know how to do that and expecting these parts to come out and put it together when they come out, you know, out of your printer is different, you know, so. It, it I, 3D printed, right? Like doing like the head printing it so the the hair is next to the base like it goes up or this way right i found that to be night and day different for me when i when i'm doing figures really because cuz the joint is going to be 100% perfect where instead and of I've, I've, I've gotten like this this spider-man i don't know if it'll show up but like, there's no gap. I didn't fill that with nothing. That's okay. just it going together. You know. And you've been doing the opposite of what everybody else does. You know so, what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. I found that to be night and day different for me. Um, but the bad thing is, is the hair gets messed up, so you have to go in there and sculpt the hair. But that's easier. Than doing the other stuff. Than doing the joint. <laughs> yep, you're right. You know, yeah, the hair could be sculpted pretty easy. I mean, you know, once you get the hang of it. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I gotta try it, man. You know, I gotta give it a try. See how it works out for me. Sometimes you get those 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 uh the sockets or whatever, they all come out messed up and they don't fit right, you know. Or you have to clip some of them because they're too long or right, resin right, right. up in the bottom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right oh yeah it could be frustrating i tell you mike makes it sound so easy too I and mean, i hate him for that <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah whatever it's easy for you to say <laughs> yeah the guy that's been yeah no i he's totally i totally agree with that yeah he's been, some doing days, it, he's been doing it since the beginning you know so some some days he like he shows you something too yeah. like it's just off the wall that he yeah. he does and you're like well why the heck didn't you tell me that sooner? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, paint. What are you? What are you using to paint some of these figures and cars and whatever else? You do? Uh, I'm going to give you, you and your viewers, a couple pointers real quick. Oh, um, nice. Um, for your flesh set. I started off using this set right here. The oh yeah, set. those are those are good. Yeah. Yeah. Now they also have like a bunch of different sets of colors. You can get them all if you want. You know they all work great. This is one of the best Vallejo sets that I ever bought, man. Because you can do every every Caucasian, every every Caucasian, every every um, skin tone, black, white, you know, Asian, whatever. 
out of this. All races and whatever. Female, male, and stuff like that. It works very, very well. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. Lately, I've been falling in love with these guys. This is Monument Hobbies. And this is for the Pro Acro line. I, I haven't used any of that, but it's I, I hear it's super good. Now, if you're going to use your airbrush, this is the paint right here. This stuff right here is like gold. And I, you know, I haven't been able to stop putting it down because it goes on very nice. Uh, you don't need to dilute it a whole lot because it's pretty thin already. And, and this stuff just works. The color, just the color is perfect for all the stuff that you need to do with this stuff. And I can't, I can't stop using it. I, you know, I went from, I went from this to that and I've been using this more often than, and it works amazing. The Pro Acro Monument Hobbies, they these guys, they they did it the right way, right there. Okay, so give the give it a try. You know, you got to try different products out there. I don't mix my own paint to come up with the color because I, you know, I don't want to waste my time doing that. To be honest with you, and, but, and, uh, and I'm not a chemist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, you know, you know, some guys you can see them. They they throw a couple of different colors of paint, and boom, they got flesh color. You know, boom, just like that. I'm like, yeah. Oh, now nah, just give me this stuff you know i'm like <laughs> I'm not, i don't have time for that right now so but uh you know this stuff this stuff i mean the pro acro man you know guys if you want to really try flesh tones try those even the or the fairy flesh set from vallejo it's got all the colors that you need for for shading for uh highlights and everything everything is in here okay and i got videos on how i use those you know some of my videos are in there some of the first ones I used this for female flesh too. Right here, this is good. And then you start you start seeing me to go start changing over to this stuff. All right, and it's only three colors. It's a shadow flesh, a tan flesh, and then the olive flesh. That's it. Three colors. So, so that's what you're using for the flesh tones. What are you using for like clothes and swords and stuff like what that? I, whatever. Uh, Pro Acro for steel is actually their steel colors. The the metallics are very good. Um, but I use I got a variety of paints here. Look, I'll show you real quick. All oh right. damn! Let's zoom in on that. Holy crap! So, oh, how do you like that golden stuff? It's good. It's good. Oh, this stuff, stuff is good for your impression. Huh? What's the stuff on top? Oh, this is the this stuff is really good too. This is um this is Tim Gore blood uh uh bloodline and it's made from Createx. Oh, that's all awesome. I haven't I haven't tried have a ton of, this is good for like if you're doing monsters and things like that. They got all yeah. these gory colors and stuff, really cool. Same thing with um where is it? Oh, oh these guys over here. I got them over here. Uh, did you ever try the Freak Flex line from uh, Badger? No, I I I, have, I only do the Steinle Res from Badger. Yeah, this is the Freak Flex line. This is good for monsters and things like that, creatures, and you know I use this sometimes. And then this is not the only paints. I got paints in boxes and there's stuff. I got a ton of them. Man, you really everywhere. you really took tips from Gail, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, they, here, here's a, here, I'll show you some more here. Right. right. Let me see if I can. And you see what paint down there? Oh, geez. This is full. That's full up there. Right. No, that's that's awesome. So I seen a couple army painter things. What do you have in army painter? And how are you liking that so far? I like army painter. I have um. Some of their metallics and some of their uh, for I use that for clothing and stuff like that too. Um, for like if I'm gonna do leather work, I use for leather work and rust. I use this stuff. This is a uh, and it's cheap. You could buy this for like twelve dollars at uh, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, I and I use and I that. use I use these colors up here for leather and some of these down here. And the way I do it, I show it in one of my videos. I, I, I do the stippling. Okay. And these are just um, acrylic gouches, 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 whatever you call it. 
right. So, so you're basically starting with like what is it, a yellow and a, a go from that to like yeah, brown, like your reds and your love, depending on what kind of leather effect you're trying to go with. I use I use like some of these. Um, excuse me, let me see if I can get the light up. I use some of the darker browns and then I go into like the yellows and the oranges. But you oh, can okay. use that for also for rust effect, you know. You know, so all I do is I do stippling on it. I get an old brush and I just pound the crap out of it and, and I get a really nice effect on it. Here, uh, let me show you this. So oh, yeah, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's how I did this leather right here. I did it with the stippling. All right. No, that's awesome. I. It's crazy. <laughs> and and she won she won a third prize prize award last week. Oh really? Yeah, third place What's award from, from Chiller Theater here in in New Jersey. Oh, that's awesome, dude. And I did the stippling on their sleeve too, but a different color. You know. And then the stippling also on the back of the hood of the I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You can. I, I, I can see because we all did the same thing, right? Yeah. With the shadowing and everything, I gave it that. And that you know, that's. Hello. That's Steve. Um, oh yeah. So, so. No, no, that that that's really awesome, and I can see how you how you won. Some of the other things I was going to ask you is, um, what it, the powders and the the what is it the pigment chalks or whatever they are? They're uh, they're pastels, and um, you know, I got some here. All right, let me see if I, okay. Let me use this one. It's made by they're called pan pastels. All right, they're just little different cups here, different colors. They sell them as individual or sets. You can get them on Amazon. They sell them in um, Hobby Lobby and things like that. And these are just pastels, all right? And they're very heavy pigmented. Um, you don't need to go crazy with them. They, they don't fall off like regular chalk. From Let's say you put some in your model. And you can use this not just for flesh tone, but you can use it for weathering, uh, for armor, you know, whatever you know, want to use it for, whatever you think you want it. You can use it for shading, clothes, face, whatever. Um, I use it for a lot of stuff, and um, they're not cheap. All right, like the, the flesh tone set, I think is like 35, 40 bucks, and there's only like seven, seven of these little things. Okay. Um, be careful when you open them. Don't open them dang like this because if you get on your clothes or on your carpet or whatever, you it makes a huge mess and you got to be sorry you did it. <laughs> yeah. So just open them up and, you know, you get these. All right. And all you do is just get, grab a brush. I use it for shading all my, my figures, my, as far as the skin tone goes. And if you watch my videos, it'll, it'll show you how to do it. But let me show you here. Uh, all right, let me show you this one. That was, done with, cool. that was done with pastels. A lot of pastels I put on that. No, that's... <laughs> Thanks, Steve. I don't think so, though. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. All right. That, it, this one was very heavy in pastels. All right. And um, the shading, the, the, the five o'clock shadow on his mustache, all that. Everything underneath his eyes, all that shading, and all anything where you see a shadow on his skin tone that was all done with pastels. So, so kind of kind of help me out for a second. When you're putting the pastels on, is it just one of those that you like? You put it on the brush and then just put it straight to the, and then you have to add water to it. Am I wrong on no, that? No, no water, no water. Hold on, let me show you real quick. Um, I can show, I can give you a little demo real quick, but I. When you're done putting the pastel, this is what I use. I use this stuff right here. It's pretty cheap. It's it's uh it's from Bear. It's chalk, and it's the matte clear. Now, once you spray it, it's not going to look 
matte clear is going to look glossy as hell, but you can always matte it down with uh, another different, you know, I use usually use um, uh, this stuff to matte it down. Okay, this is uh, from the Mecca line. Oh, okay. Label, the matte varnish. And they'll bring it down a little bit, you know, quite a bit. And then, you know, as you work in, they'll get, they'll get the dollar and dollar and stuff. But I could give you a little demo if you want. Well, you know, I mean, there's some of that stuff that, you know, it takes water to activate it. Some of it doesn't No take water. It. This stuff, you got to use it dry. And what I use is I use two brushes. I use whatever size brush I'm going to, I'm going to put on the, um, hold on a second. Let me get it for you. Like, depending on the size of the figure, the head, or the scale, you know, I keep this separate because I don't want to mix them with my paintbrush. This is just for pastels. Oh, okay. I keep them separate because if you get pastels on your paint, then, you know, it's going to mess up with your paint. And you're going to get mad. You're going to throw things around. You know, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So, oh, yeah. I my totally main color that. for uh, for for shading Caucasian I use the red oxide. All right, look how red that is. Okay, that's, that's pretty sharp. All right, I got this little little figure right here. All right, and I got this small brush. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you real quick how this works. All right, I'm gonna shade a couple. Hold on a second. I'm gonna shade a couple areas on this figure, and basically. All right. See underneath the right on the side of the nose. And you just lightly put that on, right? Just lightly put on, just like you're brushing with the regular brush. Okay. okay. That's right. wow. That's and then really you grab cool. and then you grab your filbert brush. Okay, one like this. And then you gently just blend it in. And that's it. And this is don't forget, on your chin. You can also have skin tones underneath it, and then you're yeah. going to be still applying even more skin tones on top of it. So it's not going to be, it's not going to look like that orangey, rusty color. It's going to give it that shadow color that you're looking for. And it's all, it's all process. You're going to, it's all layers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And once you start layering those colors in, and then you, you might want to go back and you want to do some highlights. So you're going to grab some lighter colors, all right, lighter colors, like almost white. And you're going to start highlighting the, the highlight areas like the bridge of the nose, maybe the wrinkles on his face, you know, maybe some of those spots on his the collarbone is sticking up. Just add a little bit, brush on and off. You spray. Once you spray that, that top coat, It'll meld everything together, and it'll bring everything together, and it'll blend everything, and it'll give you some awesome results. And I learned this from from a couple of people online. Uh, one is Matt Morozik, and the other one is uh, Vince Vale Customs. All right, Vince those two Vail. guys. Those oh, two guys yeah. use the use, use the pastels like crazy. They go they go nuts with it. They also no, use but... yeah. Go ahead. But that technique you just showed, that's on your channel, correct? Yes. And yeah. you show how to do that. That yeah. way people yeah, can I just, go to I just your uploaded, Yeah, I just, here's, here's one. I just uploaded the skin tone for this guy. <laughs> that's so cool. This one won first place in Chiller Theater the other day for the sci-fi uh, category. No, that that is so impressive. Yeah. And that's the picture I think I used for the video for this. So that's oh, really? and that's done, right? I think the picture I used it wasn't quite done yet. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I was scared shitless doing the doing the the OSL on this. You know, the orange lighting from the from the what do you call it from the um, from the flare in the movie? Oh, okay. I wanted to give it that effect, and and I was scared to do that, and so I left it all the way to the end. And I did it like a couple of days before I went to the show because I didn't want to ruin the kit. 
but you know but there it is right there no that's that's awesome dude i and it's that part of the movie you know where the flare is flaring you know nobody's painting him this way this is this is how you see it you know yeah because that's right after it goes off and that's what like mangles his hands and everything right if I remember the movie right, well, he comes out. He comes out of the. Um, he comes out where he get, he was transforming and uh, from the from the base, and he goes outside, and that's where they burn him. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, but he first throws a flare on the ground, and the flare is just reflecting on his face, and I just wanted to capture that moment. You know what I mean? So. But that was no, that, man, that's that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the powders. What about the other one? It's like the pastels, right? No, that was yeah. the pastels, right? Those, those are the pastels, and those are the only ones that I use. I, I was using um, like chalk, and I was just scraping it onto a piece of paper and using that. But it wasn't, you know, I wasn't getting the same effect. It wasn't, it wasn't like you know sticking on properly. Or a lot of times when you when you put it on, it just blows off. This stuff will stick. You know, stick. You want to do weathering. You want to do shadowing and highlights on your kits and stuff like that. I do mostly, like I said, I do mostly figures. If you go on my channel, that's all you're going to see is going to see how I do the figures. But if you want to go and, and learn how to do there's people that are using this for a lot of stuff out there and they're getting some awesome effects. They're not cheap, but they'll last you. You're going to buy them one time. Cause I haven't, you know, I've been using this since I, you know, for a long time and you know, I barely gone through it, you know, I, I would like to see how that works on like a tank to do some of the weathering and stuff on a tank. Oh, I think I think we'll love to see that. I see this one guy who actually did all the threads and all the inside of the where the where the sprockets are and everything like that with this stuff. Came out phenomenal, man. I was like, holy yeah. crap. You so we're gonna try. we're is there any other paints or anything you use that's kind of unique to what you do? Um no, I just you know I used a lot of inks. Uh, the Liqu liquid tech stuff like Gilbert uses. Um, I do use a lot of the the cheap hobby knife, uh, hobby paints. They just work just as well. These are like a dollar each. I I use it for I bases use, and things like that. I use this stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's like and, I use them for so clothing. I use them for clothing too. You just got to dilute them right, you know, and that's it. And you can just. Well, the one other paints that I was I, I am gonna tell you that I do use and, and I get really good effects if like um this is uh this is from Garage Kits US. All right. Oh whoa, 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 what is oh okay, that's what it's called. Okay. Yeah, that's the name of the brand. Uh this is a transparent bright flesh. It doesn't look like bright flesh, but what this does is like if let's say if you're painting <clears throat> And you need to make an adjustment to your your skin tone, but you don't want to start all over again. Like if it's too bright, you just use a little bit of this with a little bit of alcohol and you spray it over your kit far away. Okay. It'll give it like that golden tannish color, you know. Yeah. And that that works really good for me. I, you know, I use a lot of their stuff too. They have like stuff for painting tongue and lips and things like that, and they, they actually work very well. You know, check out their site. Right now, he's got a shortage on on the pigment. So, but if he once he gets the stock back available, you know, just hit him up. And that's um, I can't, I can't remember his name, but yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. So, all right. So now we're gonna go into tools. Okay. Right. You need tools that you use. I'm assuming an airbrush is gonna be one of them. We've seen the paint brushes and stuff. What's gonna be some of the other stuff that you like using? I'm just basic, you know, I just use, there's two airbrushes I use the most, which is, um, I use a Sotar a lot, 2020. I love that thing. I have this one. Is, I, this I is, uh, this is awesome. And if I need to get really close or do any really detail work, I use the Infinity. That's the hardened steam back, right? Yep. So what, it's how, how, how do you like the the two compared? Because a lot of people compare that one to the Sotar. What what do you think the difference is? Uh, this one right here, I can get really into detail for, and I can stick there for a long time if I really find details. 
I can really get in there with this one. Sotar is a good all-around brush. All right, you do it. You do everything with this. You know, it's beautiful for that. This one is for more like really, really fine detail. I can do hairlines with this. Yeah, and that's that's the reason I ask you. It, it's yeah. like those are the two that are compared. I think. Yeah. When it comes to that kind of stuff, because the Sotar is really good at detail stuff. Also. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I feel like. I feel like this one right here is like my workhorse and I could do everything with it. But that one, if I really need to get to fine detail, I can, I can really, you know, hone in on that one and get some really good stuff, you know? I don't, I don't know if it's the feel or whatever with it, but, you know, I, I, I find more better results with that one for me. Oh, that's uh, cool. I use a lot of dry brushing. I use um, these guys right here. This is, oh, what's the name? Um, Artist Opus. They're from England. Oh, how do, do you have the set or just that one? No, I have the set. I just got them. I got stuff from all over the place right now. I got like about four of these, the dry brushes, the different sizes, and I got this little. I, I paint this thing with a with a primer all the time, and then I use this for for my dry brush. Is that, the, is that one of the things that comes with the brushes? Yeah, you can get the real big one like Gilbert has, or get the small one. Right. Okay, I didn't realize they had the small one. Um, yeah, that's cool. But I also use I also use the Army Painter ones, which is these. Okay, and they work. Okay, just so well. compare the two. Compare the two since you have both. Uh, the bristles are a little bit softer and longer on the Artist Opus. These are a little bit stiffer and shorter. That's all. But get do you really get the same effect? Because yeah, for the, yeah, depending on how much what kind of paint I feel like if you're using very liquidy paints. I used I like to use the stiffer one. All right, and if it's if real real liquidy running paint, and the if the paint's a little stiffer, then I use the softer one. Oh, right. okay. That's all. That's that. the only difference, you know. Um, brushes I have a you know I also use I I've been I bought these artist opus ones, and I got to tell you, like the number two, their S line is awesome. I like I like long brushes, long bristles. All right. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I like them long. That's a number two right there. Okay. Yeah. Holy crap. And the other <laughs> one that I like is uh, I'll show you right now is the the liner brushes. See how long yeah, that is? You can, yeah, you can see that a little bit. These are Tidwell brushes. And they're not cheap, they're not expensive, but they're actually pretty good. Let me show you one more. And then yeah, I have a couple. I, I buy a lot of Hobby Lobby stuff, and I think they're those are fine to do you know most of your work, but you want to have a couple of good brushes for doing some detailed stuff. Look at this one. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> And you could this could carry a lot of paint, and you could just you know do the detail. And if you got to do a, like a long, you know, this is a liner brush. I, I was gonna say that's those for like doing the really long pinstripes and those yep. detailed yep. lines, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then they'll come in handy. I used them a couple of times already, so. And I feel like you have I have better control with brushes like this, but that's me. You know, you find whatever is comfortable for you. You know. Uh, oh. Monument Hobbies also has some good brushes if you're interested oh. in it. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know they, they had brushes. Yeah, they have brushes too. They got pretty good stuff. All right. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that. But, you know, like I said, you know, the easiest way to do it is is just, you know, just head out to my channel and you'll see the last one I did, I, I kept it. I was going to fast forward to it trying to make it shorter, but I said, you know what? I was so proud and happy of the way that came out that I said, let me leave it alone and let this guy watch it and just learn how to do everything from putting the base down to putting the pastels, you know, everything. And, you know, I did also some, a lot of speckling and stuff like that to give it a realism, you know, tinting, all that stuff is there. So this way you guys can learn how to, you know, do skin tones and hopefully it'll help you, you know, 
with your quest to paint really cool. You know what I'm saying? It didn't take me that long. You know what? You got to learn how to be patient. The results will come. You know, that's all. That's all I can. I can. Uh, that's the best advice that I can give you. You know, as far as that stuff. So. No, I, it's it's true. <laughs> it's yeah. you know it's. So. I, I try to do all that stuff and then I get at the bench and it's like, I only have like two minutes to get like 30 minutes worth of work done. Yeah. You know? you know, that's the thing is finding time. You know, I try to come up here like the end of the day, you know, you know, usually like Fridays this is my chill time. And then Saturday afternoons or something, you know, I got, I got time to do stuff. Um, you know, and, and I try to find time here and there whenever I can, but you know, you know, life keeps you busy. I mean, I, I'm still working, you know, um, I got a family, I got a young boy, you know, so uh, he keeps me busy. So, you know. so, so we're we're in that part of the show where you could show some of your stuff. All right. Um, well, I showed you the the um, the stuff that I brought to the show. I'll show you those real quick. I, you know, you saw this one for anybody that just showed up. This was printed by. Uh, I bought this one from uh, Hobby Mike at NYC three NY three D Creations. And yeah, this, I... this was the group paint. This guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy right there. <laughs> All right. So that one I took to the show. Uh, this is a Negan I did. Now, the thing I really like about some of the figures, and this is one of them, yeah. that you have like that light source. Yeah. And then you have that dark source. So you get that both transitions. Yeah. Well, this one I did, I did both. I did um, like a light from the moon coming from this side. Okay. And then something from like a fi fire or a flame coming in from the bottom. So you got one coming from the top and the other one coming in from the bottom. So that's why you see the light hitting the jacket in different ways or the face. All right. But you still, if you look at it straight, you can still see. The reg some of the regular skin tone that I put be below it, yeah. when you start turning it, it just it just changes the whole, it gives it a different effect. You know what I mean? Okay. No, yeah, and that's and that's some of that pigment stuff that you use to get that, right? Well, some of the, yeah, for the shading and some of the highlights, I use the pigments, but I also use a lot of acrylics in this. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Michonne from That's The Walking Dead still, right? Yep. Okay. And I think that's the lady that is in like Black Panther too, I think. Yes, correct. Now you see the leather work that I did on that? That's the stippling that I was talking about before. Uh -huh. Same thing, same thing with the the sheath on the for the sword right here. That's so cool, dude. And I got the blood. <laughs> no, that's cool. Is that the blood effect from that um, Createx line that you were talking about earlier? Or do you use something else? No, I'm going to give you a secret. You ready? FX blood, huh? Wuchi FX blood. They sell it on Amazon. Is that actually a paint or is that more of like a pigment? No, it's a paint. And okay. it's very thick and very coagulated. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. All right. No, oh, that's awesome, dude. You do such good work. Thank you. Thank you. That's crazy. Yeah, I got one more here for you. This is the McCready from the thing. Oh, okay. No, that that's incredible, dude. I see the difference between the casted and the 3D printed stuff, you know. Uh, Wait, is that is that one casted or is that 3D printed? Casted. Oh, okay. No, that's awesome. This is heavy. <laughs> and the way I started, you know, to do things was like I don't know if I want to I want to show you guys real quick. Um I printed a bunch of these little heads, right? They come okay. out, like, they come out like this, and then I appreciated them. Okay. So then I started painting different scales. I started off with a real small one. 
okay? Just blending colors. And this is why I, I didn't use pastels yet, but I was using just regular acrylics on this. And then I went from that to a little bit bigger. Okay. Just kept on sizing them up and painting and blending, just practicing. That's all I did. All right. Until I got, let me see if I can get a good picture on that. Until I got this guy. All right. Oh, wow. And and it seems like every size you're able to get just a little bit more detail in each one, right? Yeah. The smaller they are, the harder they are. I, I, I can't do that small anymore. I mean, like my eyes just can't do it, you know? So I like, doing the, I like doing the Space Marines and not putting the faces on, just the helmets. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, right? It's tough. It is. So, yeah, so, you know... So that's what that's it. I mean, you know, I mean, that's why right now I um right now I'm working on a couple of things. Um, I'm actually working on um I got a um I got a couple of things that I'm going to probably give out next week. So if you guys want to join in, just you know, just stay tuned to my channel and uh, I'm doing some giveaways. Everybody's welcome. So um, you know um I got that going on. I'll probably be doing another review. All right, so you know things like that, and then you know maybe another paint up coming soon too. I'm doing a kit that I got from uh, NY 3D Creations from Mike. That's oh, which one'd you get? Which one'd you get? I got his Willy Wonka. Ah, oh, yeah, that's killer. That Gene Wilder one, right? Yeah, he's he did, he did, he did a he did, he got a nice <laughs> job on uh, on the catching the the pose and the face. Yeah, it's really cool, and I want to do a, a little a little review and maybe do it and paint up on that one too. So, which, which will be fun. I got a couple projects in the works, though. You know, I'm, I got I'm still trying to finish the last group build that we did together. The the Chara or whatever. The Chara. Okay. Oh, dude, I'm working on her still. We got a lot of lot to go, but she's getting there. Yeah, no, that that's that's killer, dude. Yeah, I missed the one week, so that's why I'm trying to catch up. So she comes with a hat. Yeah, and then the next one is like a Christmas themed one that I we're yeah it, it, yeah head over to uh to Red Dragon Model Works on YouTube and he, we're doing a uh, a group paint up you still got time to order if you guys want to join um we're doing a christmas theme and and gilbert has the piece that we're going to be doing on his site so um uh, you know join us if you guys want and um uh, you can order the piece through uh ny3 creations because we you know the, a lot of the stuff that we use to paint up is uh we get it from him so uh so it's fun man i have a lot i have a good time over there we do it you know, it's pretty fun. I like it. No, it, it and it's a cool group. And listen, it's guys, like you know, I, I paint. You know, like like I said, I'm not. Gonna, I'm full disclosure. I'm not a professional painter. I don't consider myself an artist or anything like that. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hobby. You're, you're definitely an artist. Well, thank you, but I consider this as a hobby, and I, and I have fun yeah. doing it. I enjoy hanging out with you guys and doing it together. You know, and things like that. And you know, I enjoy you know, you know, just talking to people and meeting new people and stuff like that. And it's a lot of fun, you know. I don't take it, you know, I try not to take it too serious, you know. <laughs> Just if you take it too serious, then you get bored of it, you know. <laughs> you know, so. Uh-oh. Sounds like Mike's even going to make an appearance. But he said that last time, too. Oh, come on. Yeah, it'll be nice, Mike. Have you guys with us. See, he, needs, awesome. he needs to do the super big one. Yeah, he likes the big, big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a joke, guys, because like you used to see the monster thing that he printed just recently, and it's like 14 figures and one base. <laughs> Monstrosity. Holy no, it, it, it's... It's yeah. cool, man. I would love to have that piece. You know? Yeah, I would like to have it, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> it's, like, right? it's expensive. Right. But you know what? You know, you know you're going to get a quality kit from Mike, because Mike is takes his takes pride in his stuff, you know? So, 
Anything, everything that I ever got from Mike, I never had a problem with it. Mike, you need to stop it right now. <laughs> you can paint. Stop it. Yeah, but it's you know, it's, I like I like having fun. You know, doing the Saturdays whenever I can, I get jump in there and paint with you guys. You know, and he, even doing the Friday one, like yeah, when just we're a Friday hangout, yeah, cutting up. Yeah, it's it's a good group. Yeah, it's, it's a good group. It's a really nice group. I like the group. It's pretty tight. You know, you know, it's fun. It's fun. I, I have a lot of fun with it. So we've hit about that hour mark. Um, did you have any questions for me? No, no, not you know. I, I know you've been printing your little heart out. <laughs> you actually gave me a couple of tips on the on the resin and stuff, which I appreciate. Um, but no, no, you know. I mean, you know, we hang out on a Friday, so I could we catch up then. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Well, but, I always uh, give I always give that opportunity for people to ask me questions because I get to do it to you for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But you know, I, you know, thank you. I appreciate you know, you know, you with the with everything and the opportunity to, you know, promote my channel and everything. I, I really thank you for that. Thank you to your viewers and everybody, you know. Yeah. So well, and I hopefully know. this helps you a lot too, because yeah, you know, I, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, I, I want to be totally honest with you. I'm not, I'm doing it for fun, man. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm really having a lot of fun doing it. I like, you know, people, if they have any questions, you know, just hit me up and I'll be happy to help you out if I can. And if I can't help you, I'll, I'll send you to somebody who can, you know, it's not about, Keep the sick secrets. We you know we share the information with everybody. You know, we're pretty open about stuff like that. So, you know, we're trying to help each other out. And Gilbert is great. Gilbert, I learned a lot from him. You know, he's one of my uh he's one of my mentors, you know what I'm saying? So uh, oh, yeah, I, I totally know. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm right so, there with you. So, you know, we learn we I think we all learned a lot from him. So I gotta give him his props because he is good and he's very kind too. You know, he takes the time and sits down with people and actually tries to help them out, which is really cool. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people like that out there, guys. So, you know, you know, just got to find them. That's all. Right. So. Very, very true. All yeah. right, man. Well, I'm going to cut this off then. Thank you for okay. coming on. I'm glad we were able to and make thank this. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you, everybody out there watching and everything. Thank you for all, all the stuff and all the, the, and, the real nice comments and we Thank will you. uh i will talk to you in a couple minutes okay yeah all right thank you again for coming on and we'll all right everybody so you got to meet jerry today fantastic painter so if if you get a second go over there and check out his channel give him a subscribe subscribe to his channel check you know really cool guy so I will see you guys next week with Miguel, who's we're going to be promoting his uh, 3D printed site. So something you might want to check out if you're getting into like some of the 3D printed car, car wheels and stuff like that. So I will see you guys next week.